Ms. Anne-Marie Florence, and I am coming to you today with a vocabulary strategy lesson. And I'm here at home with my two boys who are also learning at home today, just like you are. And they're gonna help me out with this lesson. They're in second grade and sixth grade. And so this is a vocabulary strategy that I'm gonna teach to you that pretty much students in almost any grade can use. So the vocabulary strategy is called word mapping. And this is the, the purpose of it. So it's a vocabulary strategy that helps you use word parts to determine the meaning of unknown words, okay? Because if you're reading and you come across words that you don't know in the text, if you just skip over them, then you might miss a lot of the meaning of what you're reading. So this is a strategy that you can use independently once you learn it to help figure out what the words mean. So before we get into the strategy, there's a couple of things that I want you to know. So one is that words, a lot of words are made up of parts. And those parts are called morphemes. And a morpheme is kind of just a fancy word that means a word part with meaning. So there's three types of morphemes that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Okay? So a lot of times when we come across words that have prefixes, roots, and suffixes, if we know the meanings of those parts, we can put them together and we can predict the meaning of the word. Okay. So, I have some words up here. So we're gonna first talk about prefixes. So a prefix is a part of a word that comes at the beginning of the word and it can affect the word's meaning. So I have some examples here. Okay, so here's an example. This word has a prefix on it. Can one of you guys who, who are here with me, can you tell me what the prefix is on this word? Re. Re, okay, so I mark my prefixes like this with this little backwards L to kind of break it off from the rest of the word. And not only can this help you know the meaning of the words, it also makes it easier to pronounce the words because once you break the word up and take it apart and read it in chunks, then it's easier to read the word. So this prefix re, do you know what it means? Have you heard that prefix before, Lennon? Again. Yeah, it means again. Um, so vise means see. So if your teacher told you to revise something, that would mean she wanted you to look at it again to see what needed to be changed. So this word has the prefix re. Um, let's just practice with some other words, just identifying the prefixes before we get into putting some parts together. Okay, so how about this word, submarine? Is there a prefix on this word, submarine? Sub. Sub. Okay, so I'm going to mark it here. And sub means under. And marine means what? Water. Yeah, Ocean. it means with water. So what would this word mean? Um, oh, underwater. Underwater, okay, good. How about this word? Is this word, do you see a prefix in that word? Lennon, what do you think in. it is? In, very good, that's a prefix. So um, as you can see, this strategy, if you're a student and you're watching, almost any any age can use this strategy. Lennon's in second grade, and he's using this strategy, and Luke's in sixth grade, and they'll just have different types of words to look at, um, but they can both use this strategy. So in, Okay, it means not. And visible means you can see it, right? So what would this word mean, invisible? You can't see it. You can't see it, exactly. Okay, so here's another word, let's practice one more. What's the prefix on this word? Un. 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 Okay, so I'm gonna mark my prefix and I have unanswered. And what does un mean? Not. Not. Okay, so unanswered means not answered. Okay, all okay, right, very good. Okay, so we talked about prefixes. And then we're gonna skip over the roots and we're gonna talk about suffixes. So prefixes come at which part of the word? Beginning. The beginning of the word. And suffixes come at the end, end of the word. Okay, so let's talk about some examples. Here's an example. This word has a suffix on it. So what's the suffix on this word? Do you know? Bull. Bull. Uh, able. Able, very good. Okay, so we add this suffix able, which just means can, right, or able to. And we add it to love, and what does it mean? Love. love like or you, you can, can love, love it. You can love it. Okay, good. All right, and here is an, another example. Do you see a prefix on that word? Or. Or, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to mark it off. So for suffixes, I mark them off by using this little L shape. Okay, so this word, editor, means O-R is a suffix. That means one who does something. So one who edits. Okay, so how about this word? Does that have a suffix on it? Ish. Ish, okay. And ish, what do you think reddish means? It means it's 
Um, ish means like kind of. Yeah, it's like red, right? It has the qualities of red. Exactly. Sometimes when you add suffixes, you have to change the spelling of the of the base word. That's probably a whole other lesson, so we won't get into it. The, the rules around the spelling changes, but you probably noticed that there's two D's when I added the suffix ish. Okay, how about this word? Is there a suffix on this word? Less. Less, okay. So, what does less mean? The, the, without. Without, okay, so this word would mean? Without fear. Without fear, okay. So these are um, fairly simple suffixes. Some of them are gonna be harder, and if you don't know the meaning of the suffix, you might have to look them up. Um, when I teach this to my students, I have, they have lists of the most common prefixes, suffixes, and roots, but if you don't have that list, you can look them up. You can use your phone or your Chromebook or your device and look them up online. Sometimes you can have more than one suffix on a word, and that's called a compound suffix. Here's an example. How many suffixes? What are the suffixes on this word? Less, less and less. less. Okay, so I'm going to mark them both. Here's one, and here's another. So two suffixes on there, okay? That's called a compound suffix. You can also have compound prefixes. So, like I could say, unrevised, okay? So then I could have un and re, so it's a compound prefix, either way, okay? So that's suffixes, and then the other word part that we're gonna talk about are this one in the middle, roots, okay? So we talked about prefixes at the beginning, suffixes come at the end, and roots are, they're kind of the main part of the word, the part that gives the word its main meaning. And prefixes can come, at, or roots can come at the beginning of a word, it can come in the middle of the word, at the end of the word, or it could just be the word. So I'm gonna use this example. The root here is aster. So does that, do either of you know what the root aster means? Um, no. What, do you know what it means? A star? Star, it has, it's, it's a star, okay. so. Here's a, here's a word where the root is at the beginning. This word is asterisk. And if you don't know, an asterisk is this little thing here that we sometimes use um, when, we're, when we're notating something, when we're writing. Cliff note yeah, or so something like that. Yeah, so that's an asterisk. And can you see why aster would be the root in that word? Because it, it looks, looks like, like a star. It looks like a star, right? Okay, so how about this one? So here we have aster at the end of the word. So we have this prefix at the beginning. What is that word? Disaster. Disaster. Why do you think we'd have a star here in the word disaster? Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it has to do with star, right? But a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, people believed that the position of the stars and planets had influence on earthly events. So in this case, dis is a negative prefix. And if we combine it with aster, meaning star, so this word came from um, people back then thinking that um, the stars were in, an, something about the stars, a negative positioning of the stars is having a disastrous effect on Earth. So that's where that word comes from. Um, okay, so and here's an example where there's that aster root again, and it's in the middle of the word. It has a prefix and it has a suffix. Okay, and here is an example where aster, the root, is the word. Do you know what an aster is? Uh, um, star? A flower. A flower. Wow. Yeah, it comes from the word star, but an aster, if you've ever seen an aster, it looks like the shape of a star, and that's why it's called an aster. Okay? So those are the roots. Um, so when you know the meaning of, of a lot of roots, then there's whole families of words that have that same root in it. So if you know the meaning of some common roots, then you will have insight into the meaning of a whole lot of words. Okay, so going back to our morpheme types, remember morpheme is the word we're using for word parts with meaning. We talked about prefixes, roots, and suffixes. And now we're gonna talk about the strategy um, that we're gonna use for putting these parts together to help predict the meaning of words. Okay, so this strategy has a mnemonic that helps us remember the steps in the strategy, okay? So the strategy, the mnemonic spells out maps. So the first thing we do is we map the word parts. That just means we write them down. And then we attack the meaning of the part, of each part. That just means we write the meaning down for each of those prefix, suffix, and roots. The P 
stands for predict the word's meaning. That's kind of the fun part where you get to predict the meaning based on those words and then S is see if you're right. So look back at the sentence you found it in and see if it makes sense or look it up on your, on, on your device in an online dictionary and see if you got the word right. Okay, so um, come on over here with the video, Luke, and we're gonna, we're gonna try this on a couple of words. So this is what the map looks like. So we came across this word. Lennon was reading this book. It's called Woven, and this word was in it. And it looks like a hard word to read, but once we got to looking at it, we broke up the word into parts. We said, okay, is there a prefix in this word? And we saw M-A-L, and we recognized that as a word part that we were familiar with. And Luke, you told me what it means. What does it mean? Bad. It means bad, okay. And then we also recognize O-U-S as a word part that we were familiar with. So we marked that off as a suffix. And then we noticed that in the middle, we had this word, odor, okay? So I'm gonna write down here what each part is. So the prefix is mal. So this is the M step where I'm mapping the parts of the word, okay? And this is the root, odor. So I'm gonna write that here for root. And then here's the suffix. It comes at the end of the word. And that suffix is O-U-S. Okay, so I mapped the word parts. Now I'm gonna do the A step, which is attack the meaning of each part. So the meaning for prefix, Luke just told me, is bad. Okay, it's like bad or evil. Like, can you think of another word that has mal in it? Malnourished. 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 So malicious. malicious. Good. Those both mean malnourished means badly nourished, and malicious means bad. Okay, so odor. Well, we know the meaning of that, right? Well, smell. Smell. Okay, so we don't really have to look that up. Sometimes if you already know the meaning, you can just write it down. And so in this case, we knew mal because we associated it with some other words that we knew. But if we didn't know, we could have looked it up. Okay, and then we have the suffix O-U-S, which means full of. Okay, so for example, joyous means full of joy. Okay, so we know the meaning of these three parts, and now we're gonna predict these words. So a lot of times when we're using the parts to predict the word, it's helpful sometimes to go backwards and, and then put it together or to kind of just, you have to play with those parts and be flexible in putting them together. So um, what, what could you predict about this word? And we want to put it in our own words. So Lennon, what do you think? Well, how would you put those parts together? It's full of bad smell. Full of a bad smell. Stinky. Good. Stinky. Another word, stinky. Okay. That's a good kid-friendly definition. Whoops. So I'm going to write that down full of a bad smell or stinky. Okay, so then um, we're gonna go back into the, the sentence that he saw it in, and Lennon's gonna read it for us, so it's right here. Um, here, start right here, okay, on she. She knew that Nat had his heart set on a puppy, not a fully grown dog like this mongolous mongrel. Okay, so would stinky work in that sentence? Is she calling the dog stinky? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, that works, it's perfect. So we went back in and we saw that it was a malodorous, I'm just gonna write here the context. A malodorous mongrel is what she called it, okay? And it makes sense there. If we didn't have this in a text, you could look it up and you could write the actual definition there, however you, you choose to use it. Um, Let's look at one more word. So my other son, Luke, who's in sixth grade, he was doing a brochure on earthquakes. Er, er, earthquake, um, safety. earthquake safety. Okay, so he had this word in his, um, in his brochure. It says seismograph. And we started to wonder, why is it called a seismograph? And so we started thinking, um, I wonder what, what makes up that word. And so we, we had to look it up because we didn't know, well, we knew graph, right? We, we've seen graph before. We see it in a lot of words, phonograph, um, photograph. Just graph. Just graph. Yeah, we're familiar with that word. So we knew that was, that was a root in the word, but we weren't sure about seismos. So we had to look it up. And so we found out that seismos came from the Greek, a Greek word. Um, so that's one, whoops, it's not a prefix. Sorry about that. So some words aren't going to have a prefix, suffix, and a root. Like malodorous was, was a very nice word to map because it has each of those parts. But some words won't have all of them. In this case, 
seismograph has two roots. So we're just going to write them both in the root section. Seismo and graph. Okay, so we had to look up seismo, and we found out what, Luke, that it meant? Um, shake. Shake, okay. And then graph means um, to write or to record. Okay, so, whoops. So Luke predicted the meaning. So what, what would that word mean? To record shaking. Okay, to record shaking. So when we're thinking about earthquakes, we're talking about a device that records shaking. The earthquakes. shaking, the, the, the okay. waves of the earthquake, right? Yes. Good. Okay, so that's the word mapping strategy. Um, next time I come on, we'll, we'll look at some other texts with some words that we can map and do some more practice. So thanks for listening in, and I hope you're having a good time learning at home, and we'll see you soon.